What would you do if you found a lost tape that contained some horrifying events? <laughs> What's up, rad people? For today's video, I am doing a collaboration with Being Scared. In this video, we are narrating three creepy lost tape stories that I wrote myself. If you dig creepy pastas and like this video, please subscribe to this channel to become part of the Rodtastic community and make sure to stick around to the very end to go see Being Scared's video. There is a link at the end of the video as well as the description box below. So let's get to it. I found something and I wish I hadn't. At my high school, a kid went missing about a year ago. His name was Brad and we were friendly enough. As we live in a close-knit community, it was a pretty big deal, and it was all anyone talked about for months on end. But through the investigation and interviews and tips, nothing was ever really found. No sign of murder, no indication that he took his own life, no clues onto what happened to him. It felt like he vanished into thin air, either to pretend it won't happen again, or to hold out hope we will see him again. Most of us chose to believe he ran away. Our community had just started reassuming normalcy again. But then I found this, and it'll undoubtedly shatter that hope and that sense of safety forever. At my high school, you can rent out laptops and tablets to take home to complete school assignments. A couple days ago, I did just that to work on a presentation project. I had opened the laptop and logged in when I got up to grab my book on the coffee table. As I leaned forward, I pressed against the side of the computer and an SD card ejected. I took it out to look for a name, but there was none. So I popped it back in to look for it in any files. There was a single folder simply marked Group 3. Inside, there were six video files, each an hour long and each name corresponded with its number. I clicked on the first video and I didn't recognize the person, but he looked to be about my age. It looked to have been recorded through his webcam. He wasn't particularly doing anything noteworthy. He wasn't talking to the camera or demonstrating anything. He just looked to be on his computer alone in his room. It was odd. It almost felt like I was spying on him. I exited out after a couple of minutes and moved on to the next person. This time it was a girl, and I didn't recognize her either. She was doing the same thing. I proceeded to check the next three, clicking in, seeing the same scene with a new person, and quickly clicking out. They all seemed too natural, not worried about being embarrassed or looking good on camera. It didn't seem like any of them knew they were being recorded. It felt wrong. I was trying to rationalize why these videos existed. Maybe group three meant that they were doing some sort of research on habits or human nature. If it weren't the case, what would that mean? That someone had been hacking into people's computers and recording them? For what? To blackmail them for picking their nose? The next file squashed that theory before I even had a chance to believe it. File 6 was of Brad. I was petrified. Like the other teenagers, he appeared to be unaware. Unlike the others, I couldn't take my eyes off of him. The thumping of my heartbeat in my ears drowned out the hum of his fan through my speakers. I finally unfroze my fingers to hit pause. I had a million questions racing through my mind. What was going to happen next? How was the video going to end? And honestly, was I ready for what I might see? What felt so dangerous about this file is that I knew what happened to that person I was watching. Or at least, I knew part of what happened. And I was sure this video was going to be the missing piece to his puzzle. After a moment of catching my breath, I hit play. I made it to the 58 minute mark without anything eventful happening. Brad went from doing homework, to going on YouTube, to texting on his phone. With the complete uneventfulness of it all, I thought to myself that maybe nothing will happen. That's when I noticed him. 
A tall man with a ski mask pulled down over his face. He was slowly emerging from behind the closet door. I freaked out. I began yelling at my screen, telling Brad to turn around, to run out of the room, to not let what happens next happen. I sat horrified, watching as the man quietly stand behind Brad, who was engulfed by his phone. The man retrieved a cloth from his jacket's pocket. Just as the man reached his hand around to cover Brad's face, the video ended. I have since scanned through the other five files and each one cuts off just as the man went to cover their mouth. I was looking through the computer to see if there were any clues in the search history and recycle bin that might tell me something, anything. And that's when I found it, an unnamed folder. Inside was a single picture, a picture of me taken by the webcam when I opened the laptop. I threw the laptop off my lap and broke out in a full sprint. I ran to my neighbor's house down the street and called the cops immediately. From the window, we kept our eyes glued on my house as we waited for the police to arrive. I held my breath, anxious to see the man step out, but he never did. And after sweeping through my home, they didn't find any trace of his presence. An investigation swept throughout our state and it was revealed all the teenagers found on the SD card were involved in active missing persons cases. They were able to establish a timeline and a trail. The man had traveled down the west coast, claiming a victim as he did so. While the videos don't show it, nor has a body been found, they're treating this as a murder case. Judging by the folder name, they expect many victims will be linked to this. And worst of all, they have no clue who the man could be. For our honeymoon, we decided to rent an old cottage out in the countryside, wanting to have a quiet, relaxing week of just the two of us. Being isolated in the woods sounded perfect, and for the first few days, it was. But that all changed on the fourth night when my wife was looking for batteries for the TV remote. Digging in the drawers in the kitchen, she found a pack and a DVD with the name Jessica written in marker. Our nosiness got the better of us, and we thought it would be entertaining to see someone else's home movie. The video was choppy with one scene ending abruptly and the next quickly following, the first of which was a woman smiling at the camera and the person holding it. It looked like they were at a barbecue party as everyone was outdoors in summery clothes and listening to music. The scene ended with the girl asking the cameraman to dance with her. The next clip appeared to have been from a different day. The couple was now in a car and the camera was placed on the dash so that both were in view this time. They were giggling and singing along to the songs on the radio. It was clear that these two were on some sort of romantic getaway. If only we had stopped at this point, we could have left it on such a happy moment. But we didn't, and the surprise event change of the next scene made our stomachs sink. The clip was shaky, but it was clear that whoever was holding the camera was now chasing the girl. They were running through thick brush and the only sounds heard were the quick snapping of twigs and a person's shaky breath. The scene lasted about 45 seconds with the camera mainly pointed down towards the chaser's shoes. We couldn't peel our eyes off the television screen. The next clip showed the chasing was done and the person holding the camera had gained control over their breathing. It was short, only lasting about 10 seconds, but it showed an old building that looked long abandoned. The final scene started immediately after, and it was the longest of all the videos, lasting about five minutes. Pointed once again towards a single pair of feet, it showed them walking in the woods at an even pace, but it looked like some time had passed as the ground was now illuminated in sunlight. 
when the video finally ended, we were creeped out. We didn't really know what to think or what to say to one another at first. When we were sure the doors were locked, we sat down and tried to think of possible ideas to explain what we just watched. We agreed that while it was unsettling, nothing actually happened on the tapes to make us feel the need to alert the cops in the middle of the night. It didn't show anyone being harmed. Before bed, we convinced ourselves that maybe it was just a horror short of some sort or an idea of a disturbing prank. That helped us sleep that night. A couple days later, we pushed the video to the back of our minds so that we could continue enjoying the rest of our honeymoon. We decided to go on a nature hike since we were to be returning to the city soon. Not 15 minutes into our hike, we recognized pretty quickly we were on the same path as the one in the video. It was a surreal moment standing in the same spot the girl ran through. After a short debate, we decide we would continue just to see if we could find some evidence of it being real. We didn't feel a sense of danger. After all, it was the middle of fall and the footage looked like it was from spring, so they would likely be long gone. A few more minutes down the path, we spotted the dilapidated building just off to the side. Walking towards the door, we took a pause to ready ourselves. Swinging open the door, we found evidence of a horrific event inside. The air reeked with the smell of death. There was a blood stain caked in the dirt, and there were deep scratch marks carved into the backside of the door. Once we saw that, we ran full speed back to our car and drove straight to the police station. We told them about the DVD and what we found at the old building. They have no idea who the people on the found tape are, making them believe they were possible vacationers, but the landlord had no record of the couple or how the DVD even got there. Right now, the police think maybe the perpetrator squatted in the house between renters and left behind the DVD before we got there. They are still searching for any further clues. As for us, we're going to stick to hotels from now on. Every spring, me and my best friend rent a cabin in the woods for a weekend in nature. This year, I got there a day earlier than him and I was really looking forward to having the cabin all to myself for the first time. I spent the afternoon gathering firewood we'd be using for our stay. It was early March, so the night temps dipped pretty low and a sleeping bag doesn't offer much warmth. When the sun began to set for the day, I headed in to start the fire, but when I went to put in a log, I noticed something shiny peeking from under some soot. I brushed it off and discovered it was a DVD. Printed on the front in sloppy writing was Read Me. My curiosity was piqued. I had brought my laptop with me and had time to kill, so I popped it in. Almost instantly, the video began to play and I was left staring at a middle-aged man on my computer screen. He looked disheveled and I could see sweat stains around the collar of his shirt. After a moment's pause, he asked me to believe in what I'm about to hear, and then he began to tell me his story. He claimed he had been abducted by aliens. He didn't go into much detail about the aliens, but he did about what happened after. He was a respected man in his community. He was a school teacher and had a wife and children. So when this unexplainable event happened to him, he immediately went to be evaluated, fearing he had a mental illness. When he was given the clear, he knew it actually happened. Then he made the mistake that got him in trouble. He began telling people. Seeing as he was a trusted friend, the town started questioning if aliens really did exist and if so, if they made contact in their town. A few weeks after openly sharing his experience, he started getting weird phone calls. At first, they were just from unknown numbers asking him for more information, but they soon became more and more personal to the point he felt uncomfortable. 
That's when he noticed a car following him home from work. He questioned if the two could be related. When he found his house broken into one night, he felt his suspicions were confirmed and that he was putting his family in danger. Trying to protect them, he left town and rented this cabin. As for who is after him, he claims it was the government. They either wanted to shut him up or conduct experiments on him to gain information on aliens. He was making this video to warn me and to tell his family. He said the government has a habit of faking deaths to cover up anything they don't want leaking to the public. And he thought his clean record and support from his community was causing too much of a stir. People were starting to believe in the possibility in the fourth kind. He ended his tape with this message by saying if someone is watching this video, something has happened to him. If there are any doubts, he asked to look his name up on Google. If it says he died, no, it is a cover-up. When the DVD ended, I sat staring at my laptop. Surely, this was a prank. It was a joke. There was no way it was real. But I had a gnawing feeling to look him up anyway, just to see. The first thing to pop up was his obituary, dated late last fall. The picture was of the same man. I didn't feel comfortable staying in the cabin by myself that night. I went home, driving the whole way, trying to reassure myself that he was crazy. We ended up canceling that camping weekend. It's been a few weeks since that night, and today, I swear, I saw a car following me home from work. Am I just being paranoid? Thank you so very much for watching today's collaboration video with Being Scared. If you like this video or you're coming over from his channel, thank you so very much for taking the time to check out my channel. And I hope you like what you saw and you become part of the Rad Fam because we would love to have you. And if you're part of the Rad Fam, please go click this link next to me or in the description below to go watch his part of this collaboration because he wrote three more Lost Tape Creep Pastas that we narrate and they are really good and he deserves some mad love from the rad fam so please go show them how rad this community is until next time keep up the radness and i'll see you real soon bye